That's it. That's the whole video. Hi, my name is Marta and I am the chef and author of Sense and Edibility, a site where I teach you everything I know about cooking, baking, and cocktail making. And today's video is all about this roast beast here called penil or Puerto Rican roast pork shoulder. And watch, I'm gonna cut my hand. Okay. Pernil is a staple at every Puerto Rican party, function, celebration, holiday dinner table. Anytime somebody is celebrating something, this thing is probably on the table. If it's not, your Puerto Rican friends are probably vegans or vegetarians, or they just forgot. This is the centerpiece of most of our celebrations. And today I'm gonna teach you everything that I know about making a pernil from what cut to buy, how to marinate it, how long to marinate it, how to achieve that, which is coveted amongst most Puerto Ricans. And I'm gonna show you how to tear, tear it apart. I actually meant to say cut it, but tear it apart sounds more accurate. If you're new here, I would love it if you clicked the subscribe button and don't forget to sign up for notifications so that you can get alerts every time I post a new video. But in the meantime, let's get into this one. After you remove the penil from its packaging, give it a rinse under cool running water to get rid of that nasty slime that comes in the package with it. Um, you want to separate the fat cap that's just under the skin from the rest of the meat. Do this by using the tip of a very sharp boning knife or you can use a really thin carving knife. Try as much as you can to keep the skin intact because if you create any piercings in the skin, it's gonna split completely and kind of ruin the look of your cuero. Okay, so once the fat is separated from the rest of the meat, you're going to use the tip of your knife to poke slits in the meat all around the panel underneath the skin. Don't poke through the skin though, because again, it's gonna ruin it. Make sure you get on the sides and underneath flip that bad boy over and keep stabbing it. But don't go crazy and go all the way through to the, the skin. Don't neglect the leg part. If you can get under there with your knife, separate that skin and poke it with a few more holes. Now transfer it to the smallest pan that you own. No, don't do that. Use a bigger pan than I used and pour white distilled vinegar all over the bending. What this does is it initiates the tenderization of the meat, but it also gives it another, you know, cleaning from any bacteria or any germs. That acid in the vinegar kind of destroys them all and keeps them from ruining your penil. Now, to make the marinade for the penil, you need tons of garlic. I use two full heads of garlic. The most predominant flavor of penil is garlic. So, what I do is I cut off the woody ends of the garlic cloves and then I smack them with the broad side of my knife. And this helps me to remove the peel of the garlic a lot easier. You can also use jarred garlic, but I find that it doesn't have as um, pungent of flavor as fresh garlic. So that's why I use fresh garlic. Once it's all peeled, you can crush it or mince it into a paste using your knife, or you can go old school and do it in a pilong. This is a mortar and pestle that's made out of wood. You just crush it till it looks like this, forms a paste on its own. Now I add this crushed garlic to just a small amount, probably about two tablespoons of homemade sofrito, and I have a recipe for that on my YouTube channel, so you could check out how to make sofrito, and I create a paste using the garlic and the sofrito. Now, the spices that I use to flavor the penil are my homemade adobo. Again, I have a recipe for this on my channel. Granulated garlic, sazon, oregano leaves, kosher salt, and black pepper. Now, you may think that this is a lot of sodium, but this is a huge piece of meat, so you need a lot of salt. Form it into a spice blend and set it aside. Take that garlic sofrito paste that you made and you're gonna shove it, like literally shove it into the holes that you made in the penil. 
this is going to marinate the pernil. It's going to make sure that the pernil is infused with that flavor of garlic and sofrito as it sits in the refrigerator. So just get intimate with it. If, if you're afraid to like touch your, your meat, <laughs> if, <laughs> never mind. Okay, so here's how I make sure that that flavor stays in the pernil. I take two sheets of heavy duty aluminum foil and then I lay out three sheets of plastic wrap over those sheets of foil and I make sure they're overlapping. I set my pernil on the plastic and then I sprinkle that spice blend that we just made all over the pernil. And I rub the spices in really well, making sure to get in those holes um, underneath, over. I don't pay so much attention to the skin because I'm gonna add more salt later. But then I swaddle that bad boy like, I mean, like it's a newborn baby, I wrap the pernil tight, super tight in that plastic wrap. This method forces the, the garlic and the spices into the meat. It has nowhere else to go, so it goes into the meat and the meat absorbs it. Put your swaddled pernil into a, a bigger dish than this and marinate it for three days in the fridge. Now, you can use a roasting pan with a rack if you own one, but if you don't, I wanna show you how you can create your own roasting pan with rack out of something that you have laying around the house. If you have a small pernil, nine pounds or less, you can use a tiny disposable pan, but if you have a larger one, use the bigger pan that they sell or a turkey roaster. Take some heavy duty aluminum foil, bunch it together and form it into a coil. Then you place your marinated pernil on top of that coil, wipe off the excess like chunks of sofrito or garlic on the skin of the pernil and let it warm up on the, the countertop for 30 minutes or while you're preheating your oven. Move the middle rack in your oven just one notch lower. You don't want it at the very bottom, but you want it in the lower third of your oven. Then preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Just before putting the pernil into the oven, sprinkle two teaspoons to a tablespoon of adobo over the skin and then use your hands to rub it into the skin. This is going to um, start extracting any excess moisture from the skin as the pernil roasts. A 10 or 11 pound pernil will roast for 5 hours and 45 minutes to 6 hours and 45 minutes. Turn the pernil every hour, and if you find that the skin or the meat is getting too dark, just cover it lightly with some foil. Once it's done roasting, remove the pernil from the oven and turn the oven up to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. Transfer the pernil to a clean roasting pan and cover the meat lightly with foil to keep it from growing too dark as it roasts. Now here you're just roasting it at a high temperature to crisp up the skin. Rotate the pan every 15 minutes. Um, towards the end of this, this crisping time, I brush the skin of the pernil with the grease. This just helps that, that skin get extra crispy. So once it's done roasting and the skin is as hard as you want it or crispy as you want it, you're gonna remove it from the oven and allow it to rest for at least 30 minutes before carving. Now I know you can see the crunch on this skin, but if you don't believe me about how crunchy this is, just listen. And just to assuage any doubt about whether or not this pernil is tender, that is me removing the bone from the pernil with my bare hands. And yes, it, it's extremely hot and I am currently burning my fingers. But worth it, but um, yeah, it wasn't very comfortable. Yeah. One way to know that your pernil is nice and tender, if you could pull the, the leg bone out, I think that's the knee joint. No, hip bone's connected to the knee bone. It's a bone. Um, I think this would be our femur. But if you could pull it out, you're good to go. The other way you know that you have one of the most perfect perniles, and I'm already drooling, is this. Let me answer some frequently asked questions that I get about this pernil. I really should stop the chat. 
if I have anything in my teeth, but hey, we're family here, right? So whatever. This is the most frequently asked question I get about pernil. And it's the one that I see the most on the internet. If you're a Puerto Rican, you know that the cuero or the chicharron or the skin is just as important as the meat under it. A lot of people feel disheartened, bummed out, depressed when their cuero isn't crispy and crunchy like I just demonstrated. Part of the way to achieve crisp cuero, ever, cuero is skin. Um, it's also chicharron, but I like calling it cuero because cuero is faster to say than chicharron. Anyway, the key to achieving that is to make sure that the skin is as dry as possible going into the oven. That step that I did when I took the plastic that the panil was covered in and wiped down the skin and removed that excess sofrito, got rid of anything that could char on the skin. Roasting it in the oven, turning it periodically, helps to vent some of the steam that builds up inside of the oven. So that helps dry out the cuero as it's roasting. The sprinkle of adobo forces the moisture up out of the skin and as soon as it hits the hot oven, it evaporates and that's what dries out the cuero. That final 425 degree roasting period is the last part of making sure your cuero comes out nice and crisp. If you see that your cuero is starting to get too brown, like mine is a little bit too dark here, I'm still gonna eat it. Just cover it with some foil. You don't even, you don't need to press it on, just kind of, you know, cover it with the foil to shield it from the oven. Truth be told, nobody cares about it. You're just gonna break it up, put it in the roasting pan, serve it, people are gonna tear it up. That's how you get crisp cuero. I have always marinated my pernil for three days because I like flavor. Not to say you don't like flavor if you don't. If you are making your pernil and you don't, you're short on time, you can always marinate it for just 24 hours. Do yourself a favor. If you're going to spend the amount of money that it takes to buy a pork shoulder, marinate it for at least 24 hours. Because if you marinate it any less, you're not gonna get the flavor that you want in your pernil. I promise you won't. You don't need to marinate it longer than three days because after three days, there's nowhere else for that, that flavor to go. The meat has absorbed all the salt and all the flavor that it's going to absorb and you might as well just cook it. If you accidentally marinated your pernil for three days and you don't plan to roast it on that third day, you can always wrap your pernil and freeze it for up to six months. When I get home from the grocery store, if I know I have a party coming up, I'll marinate the pernil as if I'm gonna make it in three days, keep it in the refrigerator for three days, let the meat absorb the marinade, and then I freeze it. Now, here's a caveat to that. If you marinate your pernil, don't freeze it right away because if you put the pernil right in the freezer right after marinating it, then the meat will start to freeze and it won't have a chance to absorb that marinade. I hope that makes sense. I think it makes sense. I try to make sense. It does take about three days for your pernil to thaw, so keep that in mind. But the great thing is, you don't have to, whatchamacallit, you don't have to marinate it. I am so glad you asked that question because when I see people ask this question on the internet, some of the answers that they give are crazy to me. And they're just, I mean, people are setting you up for failure. I'm not gonna do that because I love you. Pork shoulder comes from the front leg of the pig, always. Don't do that thing that people do and assume that a pig's anatomy is the same as ours, it's not. The pork shoulder comes from right here on the pig, front part of the pig. So shoulder, arm of the pig, okay? The pork butt is further up on that same front leg. Don't think because it says butt that it's the butt, because it's not the butt. It's this part of the shoulder. So it would be kind of like our shoulder blade or whatever back muscles I don't have that I probably should have. That's what pork butt is. So if you can't find pork shoulder, buy pork butt because it comes from the same part of the pig 
The good thing about buying pork butt is that it is more tender than pork shoulder is because it's not used as much. So just make sure that you're buying a bone in skin on pork butt if you can't find pork shoulder. You can also buy a picnic ham. Notice I didn't say cured ham. Picnic ham is the butt and the shoulder. It's basically the front leg of the pig. That's gonna take a long time to roast. So just be mindful of that. Do not make the mistake of buying a cured ham for this recipe. Cured ham is pumped full of nitrates and sodium in solutions. And if you add the, the marinade that we're using for this pernil on top of all that, no bueno, it's gonna be a salt lick. So don't do that. Buy fresh picnic ham. The rule to remember when roasting your pernil, 30 to 35 minutes per pound. Okay, that's where you're gonna start. That's your base formula. If you want pernil that is sliceable, like you like slicing your pernil, go for 30 minutes per pound. If you like pull apart, I, can't, I wanna eat that so bad. If you like pernil that you can tear apart or shred, um, go for 35 minutes per pound. Now that's just the starting time, okay? So this was 10 pound, 15 ounce pernil. So that's just one, sh one ounce shy of 11 pounds. So I rounded up to 11 because that just makes sense, right? So I like my pork to be shreddable. I like it to be fork tender so I can pull it apart. So I roasted it for 35 minutes per pound. That's six hours and 45 minutes. Total roasting time. But remember, at the end of the roasting time, I crank it up to 425 degrees. So I started with it at 350 degrees and I roasted it for five hours and 45 minutes. I assessed the skin to see how much longer I needed to roast it. And I only needed to roast it at 425 degrees for another 30 minutes. 15 minutes, I turned it, roasted it for 15 more and it was perfect. You may or may not have to roast it the full last hour, okay? Just, just be mindful that it fluctuates based on how dry or how much fat is under the skin, remember that, and how your oven operates. Like there's a bunch of variables, but the formula is 30 to 35 minutes per pound at 350 degrees. If you need to crank it up, crank it up so that you can get that. Yeah. I've seen people make their perniles in an oven bag. I don't do it because it's just one more thing that I have to do. If you do it, you would need to open up the oven bag to finish crisping up the cuero. So just follow the instructions on the oven bag and then you're probably gonna have to remove the bag so you don't you know, end up with plastic pernil and then crank up the heat to finish the cuero. The fat from the pernil is rendered during the roasting process and it all ends up in the bottom of the pan. If you were to crank up the heat to 425 with that grease in the bottom of the pan, it's gonna start smoking. That's gonna freak you out, probably set off your smoke detector, and you're gonna think you need to pull the pernil out too soon and then you're not gonna end up with crisp cuero. So, I transfer my pernil to a clean pan so I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You don't have to do it, but just be mindful that it might start smoking and freak you out and freak out your family. And we don't need that. After you've, you know, devoured your pernil, transfer it to a food storage container and you can store it into in the fridge for about five days. I mean, it's good for five days in the fridge. You can make tripletas, which is a, a big sandwich with them. You can make cubanos, use it to top your nachos, your french fries, you can eat it just by itself. We usually serve penil with arroz con andules or potato salad. I mean, that is a typical way to enjoy penil. 
start with a half pound pre-cooked weight per person. Unless you have a family like mine. And then you need to start with one pound per person because we're greedy. That's pre-cooked weight. Um, and then you should have enough for the people that, the amount of people that you want to serve. You can freeze uh, roasted pernil. Just let it cool down to about room temperature, transfer it to a freezer storage bag and freeze it in the freezer for about three months. I hope you feel more informed on how to make the perfect for you pernil. Um, now that I've taught you everything that I know, all my tips and tricks and stuff, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I forgot. Well, if I forget something, I'll leave it in the description box below where the recipe also is. You can find the full recipe for this Puerto Rican roast pork shoulder or pernil on my site, senseandedibility.com. I'll link it below in the description box. Hopefully you will try it. Hopefully you will love it as much as we do. Hopefully you will make it and have it at all of your celebrations and all your functions. Don't forget to like this video if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and sign up for notifications so that every time I post a new video, you will be alerted. In the meantime, I'm going to shred this pernil and I'm actually taking this one to our local fire department because they, you know, they could use some of this. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you next time. Oh, don't forget to watch for the outtakes because you know they're bound to happen here. Bye. Puerto Rican rose pork, 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 pork. <laughs> Give me a minute to be alone with my thoughts. If you get braces later on in life, like when you're an old person like me, you'll mess up your jaw. So part of that crunching was also my jaw cracking, which is pretty gross, but I'm sorry. The banana is still crunchier than my jaw, promise. <laughs> I don't always make sense. Biggest, I want to be up higher because like the banana is right in my face. And a 10.65 pound, six, a 10 pound 65, no. I do the two pound roasting